Ironically, Americans, primarily those who support Donald Trump for president, are about to get a lesson in the true power of free market capitalism. Those who have said, we're never going to be a socialist country. Oh no, we could turn into Venezuela. Well, guess what? You're about to get your wish. You're going to learn exactly what can be bought and what can be sold in this country. Hmm. After losing a debate, very badly, by some counts, to Kamala Harris, all of a sudden, Donald Trump's lawfare problems are going away. Breaking news, two criminal counts against Trump mysteriously dismissed in Georgia election case. I wonder what could possibly have been the reason. Remember when I said he doesn't want to win? What he's going to do is turn around and sell his losing to the other side. Everything he's telling you means nothing. Because there's only one thing that motivates this man. And no, it is not America. It is not the well-being of the poor unwashed masses. This guy wouldn't give you his dirty used socks. He might sell them to you at a discount. Of course, signing them and then marking them back up again. But believe me, he doesn't care about you. Now, battlefield of the mind. We've got even more to share. I have some things to share with you guys today that you won't hear anywhere else. Not on the left, not on the right. Because both sides right now are so fixated on their emotional attachments to their political beliefs that they have no memory. That's how you can tell people who are living emotionally, they have no memory, not even of a, a couple months ago. Wait till I show you what happened just a couple months ago that everybody's forgotten about. If you'd like to get read in on the tactics and techniques used to kick people over into their emotional state so that you can manipulate them. Join us over the Florida Monkey Patreon channel. The main reason you need to know that is to be able to fight against it and to understand when it's being done to you. That's the key. That's why I have it set at the Florida Monkey Patreon channel at only one single US dollar per month. Not per video, not per week, per month. And if you sign up for an entire year, it's even less than a dollar a month. And here's the best part. For the first 90 days, you can go over there after pledging your single dollar and watch hundreds of videos going back all the way to 2018, never before seen on YouTube, talking primarily about psychological operations and how things are done. This was my job in the military. That's what I did. It was a part of my life that... I didn't think I would ever use again, but now I'm trying to use it for good. Would you join us? We'd sure love to have you. Now, I made a video not very long ago saying that they were going to cut a deal with Mr. Trump to make all of his lawfare goes away. go away. Pardon me. If he got elected, they were going to cut a deal with him with gun control. Here's the video. What's the date? Five days ago. Five days ago. Trump's secret plan for mass roundups of people and guns the federal government deems too risky. Well, he's already started negotiating. Let me give you a little clip. This is my own video from five days ago before the debate. Here's a preview. Hey, Donald Trump, you've got a bunch of lawfare issues going on, don't you? Don't you? I mean, you got elected. You got elected. We tried. We tried to stop you, but... You see, your supporters now, they're really of no more use to you. They can't do anything more for you, but you could sure do something for us. We could make all of your lawfare go away. You spent a lot of money on lawyers, haven't you? Well, guess what? Guess what? We can make all that go away if you just work with us. And all we're really going to ask you to do, all we're really going to ask you to do with gun control is just... Stick with promises that you've already made. Now, that's just a snippet of that, but it gets even better. You might want to sit down, grab frosty cold beverage of your choice, maybe a snack. What I'm getting ready to show you next is going to be 
mind-blowing. Now, Donald Trump has recently come out and insists that he won the debate. In fact, here's Donald Trump in his own words. When a prize fighter, Donald Trump speaking here, when a prize fighter loses a fight, the first words out of his mouth are, I want a rematch. Polls clearly show, make-believe ones in his head, that I won the debate, speaking of himself, against Kamala Harris, the Democrats' radical left candidate on Tuesday night, and she immediately called for a second debate. Now pay attention here. She immediately called for a second debate. So he's making the allegation that because she really thinks she lost, that she wants a rematch. Okay, let's stick with that logic for one moment. If he believes that he won the debate, if he believes that he won the debate, then why in the world would he then call for ABC News to be shut down because the debate moderators fact-checked him but not Kamala Harris? Would you, to use the football analogy, if you think you, if you won the football game, has anybody ever won a football game and then in the post-game conference asked for the, the refs to be uh, removed from their positions or complained about the refereeing after they allegedly won something? Has that ever happened? Where the winning team came out and complained about the refs? No. It's never happened. So how do those two things go together? Oh, but wait. How many of you remember way, way, way back on 5 July when I made an analogy after Trump came out after his debate with Biden that was clearly a blowout in his favor and he wanted a rematch. How many of you remember that? Remember now, hold on. Let's facts first. Let's go back to Donald Trump himself. When a prize fighter loses a fight, the first words out of his mouth are, I want a rematch. Well, guess what? Way back, right after Donald Trump trounced Joe Biden in that first debate, what did Donald Trump do? Well, let's listen. Now, this is a longer clip. In fact, what I'm going to do just to get through this, I'm going to speed it up to playback speed of 1.25. And I want you to listen to the facts from just only two months ago that everybody has forgotten about. Ready? Here we go. I brought this up just as an example. Think of a football game that is really hyped up. It's two teams that perennially every year, tough game, they fight it out, and you're side up, you get tickets, and you go, and it's an absolute blowout on one side. Absolutely not even a close game. After the first quarter, quarter and a half, you are bored to tears. One team absolutely destroys the other. In this particular case, I'm using the Texas and Oklahoma example, where Texas clobbered Oklahoma 49 to nothing. After the game, of course, there's the press conferences that they do to try to explain what happened. And the Oklahoma coach comes out and says, well, you know, my offense coordinator's wife had just left him, and we had a whole bunch of players that weren't doing good in school, and they'd spent a lot of time uh, studying and really weren't focused on the game, and we really didn't play our best game at all. In fact, it was probably you know, the worst game. Um, we'd had inter-squad scrimmages that were better than this. And uh, I just can't really say anything more than that other than it's not endemic of our program or how good of a team we are. I'm sure we've all heard something like this. Now, imagine then if the coach of Texas, who just won the game 49 to nothing, came out and said, well, I heard the press conference from the Oklahoma coach. And, you know, I agree. It really wasn't their best game. It wasn't their best game at all. But we still think, we still think at Texas that even if Oklahoma had played their best game ever, we're still a better team. We could still beat them. And we don't want anyone to think that, well, the only reason Texas won is because Oklahoma had a bad night. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a big, giant do-over. We're going to call a do-over. And we're going to uh, let Oklahoma get everything squared away. And we're going to wait. We're going we're to wipe this win off the board. We're going to make sure that it just doesn't count. Nobody thinks about it. And we're going to play the game over again when Oklahoma is playing its best football so that when we beat them then, we can say, yeah, see, we beat you at your best. So that's what we're going to do. We don't want to win against a team that wasn't on top of its game. Now, 
the Texas coach should be fired for doing anything like that, right? That's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? You see, in football, much like in the military, they teach you that when you're going up against an enemy, adversary, an opponent, you have to be better on your worst day than your opponent is on their best day. See, the excuses don't matter. And if you go out and clobber somebody, absolutely destroy them, you say, well, guess what? That was their moment. They had a chance to get out there on the same gridiron as we did and put their best effort forward, and they flopped. We beat them. Doesn't matter what their excuses are. We're not redoing the game. We are 1-0. and Now, riddle me this. Why in the hell would Donald Trump want another debate with Joe Biden? He just clobbered him. Think of Donald Trump as the Texas coach who just won 49 to nothing, and Joe Biden as the Oklahoma coach who just got absolutely smoked. Why would you want another? Look at this quote from President Trump. I have the answer to Joe Biden. Let's do another debate. Why would you want another game? But this time, no holds barred. An all-out discussion. Just the two of us on stage talking about the future of the country. Why give the guy a second chance? Why give him a second chance? He had his chance. That was his opponent. You see, this is a little bit of narcissism coming from Trump. He hates this idea that people are saying, well, it's because Biden's age and he has this dementia. Trump's still ain't really not that great. It's because Joe Biden was so bad. He hates that. You see, he can't just take the win, regardless of how you got the win. Think I'm kidding about this? Here's Rob Finnerty. Okay, so you get my point. It was only two months ago that Donald Trump was wanting a do-over with Joe Biden because he believes he won, but he won against him because of some other reason, and now he's complaining about the refs in the debate where he lost, but he's also saying that he won at the same time. And oh, by the way, a few hundred million people, a few hundred million people showed up at vote.gov and registered after Taylor Swift decided to endorse Kamala Harris. Now, pardon me, was it 30 million people? 30 million people. Self-correcting there. Nevertheless, millions, tens of millions of people showed up at vote.gov. Tens of millions of people. And in this race, the irony of all ironies is that this is the very essence of what capitalism is all about. I think it's the most hilarious thing that Donald Trump and his ilk and everybody's, oh, capitalism, 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 you're a socialist commie. Well, guess what? Her ability because of the gifts God gave her and the money that she has and the influence that she has and the power that she has because she looks like she looks in a spangly little tight thing like this. She ain't that great a singer. And her songs are me. But you put a girl, slinky girl like this in some sparkly little skin tight thing and get her out on stage dancing, you don't think that's going to put butts in seats? That's capitalism, kids. That is capitalism. Oh, and all of you out there, the crypto people, yeah, it's going to go down between now and the election. It's going to bottom out again. You're going to have a great, you are going to have a great buying opportunity, maybe the greatest cryptocurrency buying opportunity coming. It's going to bottom out. It's going to bottom out. It's going to go down all the way up to the election. And then something incredible is going to happen. You thought you made a lot of money before? Hang on. Think I'm kidding? Who remembers this from way back when? This is uh, Nikki Freed, the girl who wanted to run against Governor DeSantis here in Florida, but the Democrats wanted to put up Charlie Crist. They were a moron for doing so because Charlie Crist lost by 20 points to Governor DeSantis in Florida. And there's an incredible article out. I didn't bring it up. I wish I would have talking about how Florida is so irrelevant to national politics now because of the million voter advantage 
that Republicans have over Democrats. But way back 15 December, Nikki Free decided, you know what? I'm going to squeeze into a American flag bikini and throw on a skin-tight tank top and put on a pair of big old hoopy earrings, some oversized sunglasses, and a Budweiser hat and tight little pair of jeans. And I'm going to send out a picture asking for donations. And she made $13,000 in one day. $13,000 from 400 measly contributors. $30 average. $30 average just for a tank top and a little American flag bikini. And a bud hat. Capitalism. All of you complaining about all my videos about OnlyFans this and OnlyFans that and OnlyFans the other. Get ready, kids. Get ready. It's coming. All you in, in God we Trump, all you uh, putting your hope in Trump, putting your faith in Trump, putting your faith in money, putting your uh, futures in the hands of mammon. Okay. You're going to go the way of Babylon. If it's Babylon you want, it's Babylon you're going to get. And anyone out there yammering about polls? Take a look. This was way outside the margin of error. This was outside the margin of error only a few months before the election back in 2012. So, just saying. Not a fan. Not a fan. But if there was a silver lining around the cloud that's coming, it's that people who are going to get into cryptocurrency are going to make a lot of money. And maybe, just maybe, people might wake up. People might wake back up because they've been asleep since 2015. There was a time when patriots, when conservatives had washed their hands of Washington, D.C. There's no hope left in Washington, D.C. It was going to be at the states, going to be the localities, or it was going to be individually. But oh boy, somebody comes along, starts to push your buttons, and all of a sudden you're back on your knees worshiping, hands in the air, tears streaming down your face, we love you, Trump. We love, oh my goodness, and sending, sending a billionaire money. The hilarity of all hilarity. If I had told you, if I had told you 15 years ago that not only would you be worshiping a Democrat, because he was a Democrat at the time, you'd be worshiping a Democrat turned Republican, a Democrat billionaire turned Republican, a Democrat billionaire who used to hang out at the Playboy Mansion friend of Jeffrey Epstein, you would be worshiping that guy. You would also be writing him checks. You'd have had me committed to a funny farm. But here we are. I wish they would have been given out. I wish I should have gone to Vegas and gotten odds and gotten odds on, on that. I'd be a very, very rich person right now. Maybe even richer than Donald Trump. Who knows? Because I know the odds that we would have given me that you just said a whole bunch of conservatives and alleged Christians and patriots would be voting for a guy who just simply switched parties. Who just simply switched parties. That's all he did is a Democrat. He was a Democrat when he slept with Stormy Daniels. He was a Democrat when he took his daughter and his third wife to the Playboy Mansion, dressed them both like whores, and put one on each arm. That you'd be in bed with a guy like this, it's just unbelievable. But it does go to show the power of psychological operations. That when you can get people out of their rational mind and get them kicked over into their emotions, you can do anything to them. Join us. Florida Monkey Patreon channel. It starts with the basic 24 cognitive biases and the 24 logical fallacies. You're damn right, there's homework. Look them up. 24 cognitive biases, 24 logical fallacies. They even make playing cards. 
You can get a set deck of playing cards that have all the, the biases and the fallacies, and you can take turns with each other with flashcards and asking each other about examples and reading up on examples and see if you can find examples in the media and maybe in your favorite talking heads and seeing what they're doing. Once you start down that road, you're on the way back. You've, you've fallen back away from the idea of that deep, deep slumber. You're now in a place where you can kind of hear what's going on around you. Love to have it over there. It's only a dollar. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.